Hey everyone, welcome back to part 4 of creating a mobile platform video game without code. Uh, for those who are just tuning in for the first time, this is, uh, as I mentioned, the fourth part of the video series, and I recommend starting from part 1. So, uh, with, with that in mind, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create an enemy for our player to interact with, and I just hit, uh, here I'll do that again, slower, uh, click to add an object, the plus, I hit sprite, and then for object name, we're just going to call it enemy. We uh, won't add any behaviors. We did it in the previous uh, videos for the player. However, we don't need that. So let's go back to properties. We'll go to animation. And our enemy is just going to be walking. So we're going to create one animation. We're going to call it walk. We don't need an idle animation because the enemy will never be still. Let's go to where I keep the sprites. There we go. Let's open that up and hit apply. So now we have our enemy object. So this uh, other new object, I'm just going to delete this. That was created by accident. So now we have the enemy sprite here. And one thing we want to do is want to keep track of the direction it is moving in. So we're going to click this triple dot overflow menu button and hit edit object variables. Now we're going to create a variable that's called a direction. And again, this is, you'll see why in a, in a minute or two, but this is how we're going to keep track of the enemy's direction. So it's, the enemy will start out by going right. Hit apply, and we'll drag the enemy on the screen. Now let's play our game and let's see what we have. And we see, as expected, we have an enemy walking uh, very slowly, so I'm going to speed up that animation a bit. And it uh, didn't loop, so again, I'll change that so that it loops. But uh, now we're going to add some movement, and let's get started. Edit object. Uh, so we're going to again, we're going to hit here to loop. We're going to change this to 0 0.1 and hit apply. So basically, now there's a 0 0.1 seconds between each frame instead of one second. It'll go much faster. Now let's create an object, and we're going to do a very simple technique, and this technique has been done uh, numerous times in other uh, comparable online tutorials for game creation. Uh, but basically we're just going to have the enemy moving between two invisible blocks, so we're going to call it one block left, and we're going to hit this edit with pixel button, and we're just going to paint it all, all black because it's going to be an invisible object in the end. So we'll save it, we'll hit apply, and then let's do the same thing. We'll call this one right, hit the paintbrush, edit with pixel, uh, paint bucket it, and we can, we can change the color if we want, uh, just to have a distinction between right and left when we're editing. Save to gdevelop, and yeah, that's all we need. So we hit apply. So let's drag left on the left side, and that's crucial. And then right on the right side. This dragging can be a bit finicky. So now the enemy, when we set up the events, will be moving between the black box and the red box. In order to give the enemy movement, we now need to move over to the events tab in order to uh, create some events. So let's go to this level one events tab. And before we just get started, I'm gonna add a comment for uh, clarity and also to uh, help separate the events from player movement, enemy movement, and future sets of events in future videos. So now we're going to call it an uh, enemy movements. Click away, and we're going to just click this button here to uh, the, uh, add a new empty event. We'll add it here, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the direction of the enemy based on the variable, uh, the direction variable we added just, just a second or just a minute ago. Let's add condition and I'm just going to use the search bar. I can never find the uh, proper the proper events just through the drop uh, the, the expandable menu. So the variable uh, text of an object's variable oops, I meant to hit enemy there. Okay, we got it, enemy. 
uh, the variable will be direction. Uh, the sign will be equal to, so we're going to say when direction is equal to. And this is important. It is a text of a variable, so we have to put it into quotation marks. And we're going to say left. Uh, OK. Text of the variable direction of enemy is equal to left. And then we're going to add an action. And we're going to search for force. Um, add a force to enemy. A force is essentially the same thing as movement. So the angle will be 180 degrees. So when it moves left, we want it to uh, move 180 degrees. So the speed will be... Um, this is an interesting one. We're, we can play around with this value, but right now 75 pixels per second. And we don't need to add damping, and don't, don't worry about that. So let's hit OK. All right. Now let's repeat this process for the uh, right variable. Value of a uh, text of an object's variable. Enemy. Direction. Equal to. Right. Awesome. Now we will. Add a force uh, angle. There again, we're just doing the same thing we did before. Uh, this time, though, the and this is the important thing: is the angle is going to be zero degrees because it was 180 degrees when it was moving in the opposite direction. Uh, the speed we can keep it the same, 75. And uh, again, don't worry about damping. So let's hit OK. OK. So now there's just two more key events we need to add. Uh, the first one will be when the enemy collides with the left object. Enemy object left. Okay. And so we're saying when the enemy is in collision with the left, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to do two things. We're going to set the modify the text variable of an object enemy variable direction modification sign we're going to set it set it equal to and for the text we're going to set it equal to right so in other words it collides with the left object and then we change the direction of the enemy to right by changing the variable so let's hit OK uh, and we're going to add one more action here when the enemy is in collision with left uh, we're going to flip the enemy so flipped object horizontally enemy I clicked away by mistake. Let's do that again. Flip object horizontally, enemy, and we're going to activate flipping no. So in other words, the default orientation of the enemy, you may remember, is facing right. And so we don't want to flip it because the enemy will already is by default facing in the correct direction to move right. So let's hit OK. Now let's do a, a high level overview of what we just did. So when the enemy is moving, and hits the left object, we change the variable direction of the enemy to right, and we uh, say no to flipping the enemy horizontally because the enemy's default uh, orientation is to the right. As you can see here, it's he, uh, he or she, our enemy is facing to the right. Now let's do this again uh, for the left collision. And an, oh, I seem to have a trigger happy finger today, enemy right object, so we're saying the object is the enemy and it collides with the right object. Hit OK. And now we're going to do a, a variable, modify the uh, text of a variable of an object. So enemy direction equal to Actually, see, it? I already accused myself because the we're going to set it equal to left. So when it collides with the right object, the variable will be set to left. And let's add an object, or sorry, add an action again. We're going to flip the object horizontally, enemy, and activate flipping. This time, yes, because the default orientation is uh, to the right, and we want it to face left when we change the direction to move left. So this should be good. 
uh, let's play this. Yep, and we can see our enemy is moving, collides with the box and changes direction. The left box collides with the right box and changes direction. So there's a few things we're going to improve with this. We're going to add a simple combat system where we can, uh, the enemy can either uh, attack the player or the player can attack the enemy. And we're going to also hide those boxes.